Hey everyone, and welcome to episode two of the Dialogue Podcast with Greg Ford. My name is Shaylin Ford, and today Greg and I sat down and talked about the beginning of our 20-year relationship, as well as lots of other fun things like love is blind, compatibility in a relationship, fighting well, and what contributes to a healthy long-term relationship. So hope you enjoyed today's episode. Check it out. Well, here we are. Another week, another episode. Greg Ford, how are you? I'm doing well, Shaylin Ford. Thank you for <laughs> <laughs> thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to join you in a conversation. You know what? It's my pleasure to have you here and be able to talk to you every week. In fact, I like you so much that I actually am celebrating 20 years. Let's go of being best friends with you this week. Yes. I'm really excited. Yes. I guess I'm kind of time stamping this episode, but that's okay. That's all right. It's Tw- okay. 20 years of marriage. 20 years in 2024. This Pretty, month. Yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of that. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's been a wonderful blessing. The best blessing in my life. True Same. A hundred percent. Okay. So that actually is kind of teeing up to what I wanted to ask you some things about. Okay. Which, by the way, people are not aware, I don't think... I don't think I've ever said this before. Maybe I did on the first episode, but um, I bring kind of an idea to the table. Greg does not know ahead of time what the discussion is. So this this conversation. Yeah. So, so people are getting raw, real, like watching your mind form thoughts in real time, which I love. I, I actually, that's one of my favorite things about this podcast format because I think people see um, if, if people listen to you like on a Sunday morning or something like that, they get to see this fully formed monologue format where something that you've spent a lot of time and energy processing, sometimes, you know, months at a time, or even a concept that like a year at a time has kind of been rolling around in your head, but it crystallizes over time. Um, they get to experience it fully formed. I get to see behind the scenes and have these conversations with you where you kind of start working out what you think about things and why you see things a certain way and turn the prism. So I'm excited that this is this unedited, more dialogue format because it gives people a chance to kind of get that peek behind the curtain and see the way you think. Well, real talk, you have been a huge part of helping me work through those thoughts. So there's often where I'm, I feel like I'm starting to come to some kind of conclusion and yet I feel like I have maybe a blind spot or I need to work it out. And so, I mean, I can't even count how many times I've said, hey, I think uh, I think this and, you know, this is kind of the conclusion I'm coming to. And sometimes you go, oh, yeah, that's really good. That's, you know, and then other times you'll push back and say, well, I, I think that's good, but that's not every scenario. And, you know, you'll help me see sometimes from just a different perspective, whether it's like a female perspective or maybe somebody who's wired differently than me. So that's brought a ton of value to my life. And that's what I would just even say, like in these conversations, obviously like nobody wants to see a couple just get on and fight, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but I mean, feel free to disagree. Like I bring so much value. Like if I say something that is incomplete, um, you know, in this format, obviously we're not behind closed doors in our, in our house. Mm -hmm. Um, but don't worry about uh, offending me or, uh, you know, embarrassing me or something. If, if you have something to add or subtract to what I'm saying, I think it, I think it brings a lot of value. I think that I appreciate all of that, that you just said. And I think that goes both ways. I think that's been one of the biggest gifts in our relationship, certainly for me. And I think you would probably agree is our ability to just talk about all kinds of different topics on, on a really wide range of things. And, really pick them apart and look at them from different viewpoints and sometimes switch viewpoints, play devil's advocate, you know, and, mm-hmm. and disagree with each other and not in a, in an unhealthy way, in a way that just is like challenging your beliefs so that you do get to a point where you're really either a really confident in your viewpoint. And so now you're very sure of what you believe on something and why, um, or you're like, you know what, this actually changed the way that I have always kind of seen this thing. I never thought about it that way. And now my mind is open to seeing something in a whole new light that I think has led to some of the most profound discoveries of our lives. Yeah. By the way, uh, one more thought on like this particular format, like this uh, podcast uh, dialogue conversation. All right. True story. Sometimes like I have so many conversations with so many people, I can't remember who I said what to when. (laughs) 
So if I would happen to go down some diatribe on something we've already talked about in this podcast, I'll stop you. Just, I'll just stop be me. Like, just be like, hey, you Greg, said that you, two weeks you, ago. exactly. I got you. Because <laughs> the last thing I want is people coming on here like, these guys talk about the same thing every over week. Over and over. It, and I honestly I have a hard time keeping inventory sometimes. And, and Maybe uh, that'll be us in 20 more <laughs> years when we, <laughs> you know, we're, we're old, old and gray. Well, that's not old and gray yet. All right, 40 more years when we're old and gray. And we can just talk about the same thing over and over again and never get bored of it because we don't remember that we already talked about it. That's, that's true romance right there. It is. Yeah. All, right. All right, so kind of in that same vein, because we've just been talking about our relationship <clears throat> a little bit. A lot of people don't know our history, like mm-hmm. of how we met or how we ended up doing what we're doing in life today. And so that was actually something that some people asked about. So I think we should go ahead and tell people. Okay. Give them a little overview of like, I think it even just helps people understand who the heck we are. Okay. And so I would love to hear from your perspective. Okay. You go ahead and talk about the day we met, okay. how we met. Actually... Quick question. I think I know the answer to this. Before we actually ever met, so I know I knew who Greg was, and we can like come back to that. But did do you ever recall seeing me before the day we met? No. Okay. I didn't think so. Okay. Go I ahead. did not. Um, yeah, so we were uh in college. I was going into my last semester of college, and you were going into I was I think your sophomore year of college, mm-hmm. right? And um uh, we were, I was working at a summer camp, which is kind of where, you know, I grew up in Akron, you grew up in Finley, so opposite sides of the state, but we would do these summer camps. And so they would kind of put me at the entrance of the camp to like welcome, uh, students in, uh, high five and, um, you know, have them get out of their 15 passenger van and Make them run push around, it. do push-ups. <laughs> yeah. you, you definitely had like the biggest energy. So it was like, put that guy at the front. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, I was just doing that and I was totally immersed in what I was doing, you know, just, just excited for the week and wanting to make it a great week for everybody. And, and so you somehow had slipped past me and dropped the students from your church off and then we're getting ready to leave. And so you, you and my friend, Tony, um, were, were leaving and he kind of rolled down his window and just yelled out like, hi. And so if I just waved at him, you know, he'd have driven off and you, you, you would have driven right out of my life. I never would have seen you. But for whatever reason, I, I was like, you know, kind of say, hey, wait a second. And I ran over there just to, you know, dap him up. And and uh, I get over to him and I look past. I can still see it like it was yesterday, like in the van. I remember what you guys were facing left. Um, I look right past him and I see you. And it stunned me, honestly. I'm... Uh, Telling the truth, like Do you I remember what I was wearing by chance. I, I remember, I, I believe you were wearing a white T-shirt, if I remember correctly, like a Probably. like like a T-shirt. And I, I just, just remember, t-shirt and I just remember seeing flip flops. That's my summer staples. Yeah, <laughs> I remember just seeing your your face, your face first, and just being stunned. Like, what in the world? And the, and I and like a lot of thoughts were in my head in terms of like, who is that? And and then even like, why is she riding with Tony? Because I knew Tony was married. <laughs> to not you I'm like that's not his wife um you know which is fine I was just, but I was just like who who is that right and so and then um and then I I, I was like hey you know I kind of introduced myself and I realized I was like staring at you um and I kind of caught myself but I honestly what I was what I thought like in the very short conversation because uh we didn't go into anything deep or whatever but you obviously like carried yourself really well like really sharp and just absolutely beautiful and I remember having the conscious thought who marries these women (laughs) like like what do you have to do like I I don't understand like because these women fall in love and they marry people and like what is like what do you have to do like do you have to be funny do you have to be wealthy do you have to be I don't even know like I was I was like literally like how, how does how does that even happen and then you know you you guys drove away. We just had a basic conversation. And I remember thinking like at the end of the week, if Tony comes back, I'm going to ask more questions. Like I'm going to try to figure out who, who this is. And he did. And I caught him, you know, and I was like, Hey man, who was that? You know, who was that uh, woman, you know, with you? And, and he's like, Oh, that's Shaylin. 
ha 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 you have no chance <laughs> just so mean no i mean he was just came right out like <laughs> i mean he was, so i thought mean. he was my friend i thought he'd be like yeah you guys would make a great couple no he was like <laughs> you have no shot he's like she was like a finalist miss miss ohio blah 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 i think she likes this other guy da 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 like was going into all this and then he started talking real loud he was like hey uh, greg wants to meet shaylin hot you know all these people i'm like yo Relax. Like I, I wasn't trying to have this there. big public <laughs> <laughs> spectacle. <laughs> and so I was like, Hey man, uh, you know, why don't you just let her know I'd like to meet her, you know? And he's like, no, no, again, time frame. Th there was no cell. I mean, I didn't have a cell phone. Yeah, there was no texting. There were no cell phones, but it was no, pretty very rare. rare. Like, very rare. Not everybody yeah. you knew had one. Yeah, that's right. Smartphones weren't a thing. I it didn't have one. Phone. You didn't have one. Yeah. We didn't, there was no social media. Yeah. There was no way to track you down. I don't think MySpace was even a thing. There yet, was no was MySpace. Was like, there was none of that. Yeah. So, you know, it, we were, I was kind of at, at his mercy, you know, and he basically told me no. So I was like, fine, I guess. Whatever, but which what you didn't know, you thought he was your friend. Really, he was a better friend to me because he did immediately call me. Yeah, for, he did have cell. We don't talk phone. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he immediately called me. So he and I worked together at the time. We we both worked together at a church, and he had been my youth pastor when I was growing up. So I think he was feeling a lot more loyal to me than he was to you. Way more loyal. So he called me immediately. Uh, on the way home and was like, hey, Greg Ford was asking about you. Like, are you interested at all? You know, he's like, I, he wasn't going to put my business out there for me. So I'm like, yeah, definitely. I, I, what's, what's interesting for me, if we backtrack that story a little bit from my perspective, is I knew who you were before we met. So because you're a little bit older than I was, uh, well, am that didn't I didn't catch up? I, we, I feel we've like been I did. aging at different speeds. <laughs> so clearly, my math is not mapping. Um, but uh, because you're older than I am, uh, you had started working at the camp when I was still a camper at the yeah. camp, like my senior year, and so I actually loathed you <laughs> because. You That's how every both, great marriage starts. It is. It is. <laughs> well, you, I mean, it's impressive if you can turn it around the way that you did. This says a lot about you. So you were the bane of my existence in certain ways because you were too good looking and okay. you were too competitive. No, listen, hear me out. And you were distracting. So you and I are both very competitive people. We don't play board games. It's bad for our marriage. We don't do it. Um, but we, when you were a, a camp leader and I was a camper, we were on opposite teams and you were leading your team and you're like, ah, you know, warrior energy, you guys are winning a bunch of games. I mean, I would say you also cheated some, but you know, that's neither here it's nor there. It's not a foul unless the ref blows a whistle. <laughs> uh, it's not cheating unless you get caught. That's yes. Right. And so uh, I am much more of a stickler for the rules, but also I'm equally competitive. And I would get so mad at all the other girls on my team, as well as some of the leaders on our team, because they were all completely infatuated with you. And I was like, ladies, I need you to stay laser focused on winning. You are completely being blinded by this man. Like, I, I need your blinders on. I need you to not see him. He doesn't exist. He's the enemy. We hate him. Like, and I couldn't convince people. And so not only were you winning on the field, but you were winning with mind games <laughs> as well with my team unintentionally. You weren't a flirt or anything. You didn't, you didn't have to. Just your presence was like, it was enough. And it was really frustrating <laughs> for someone like me who was like, I don't care. I want to win. I would like to take him down. So... Um, and then it was just kind of funny because I had friends that were like such huge friends of you or fans of you. They literally had pictures of you in their locker. Like it was, it was a whole thing, you know? So for me, I was like, this guy, I got to take him down, man. <laughs> and so um, that was my framework for you. So then when I actually met you that day in so, the van. So this whole marriage has been a diabolical <laughs> plan for you to I'm get even. A long game, For you baby. to destroy my life. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> that's so terrible no i did not that's, do that i but that would man that would be that would be a story that'd be an epic movie yeah it would yeah maybe i won't reveal like the true plan to you <laughs> we're like 80 and i'll be like it's all making Here's sense how it unfolded. <laughs> uh so anyways i think for me i i 
saw you, whatever the opposite of rose-colored glasses is, I saw you through those mud-colored glasses. I don't know. Okay. And so when I saw you that day that you came over to the car to talk to Tony, I was like, oh, he's actually cuter than I remembered because I wasn't competing with you. And so now I was like, gosh, he's, he's really attractive. And then you said a couple things, and I was like, and he's kind of funny. you know. So you, you were like opening me back up to being like, Hmm, okay, I guess I'm allowed to see what everyone else sees. You know, it's okay. So you started winning me over at that moment. So when I, I kind of like, I got to be honest, I don't like admitting this publicly, <clears throat> but I kind of was, you know, thinking about you the whole week after really? I saw you at the beginning of the week. Okay. Yeah. You I, know, I, I try to play it cool. Okay. <laughs> but I, I wasn't that cool. I was like, man, you kind of just kept coming to mind. So then when he called me on the way home from picking the kids up and said that you asked about me. I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I kind of liked that. Well, what's messed up is he waited like a week. To tell you. To call me. Yeah, yeah that was not And say, nice. hey, you know, remember that conversation we had yeah. a week ago? I mean, he could have called me that day and said, hey, we talked and she's willing to meet you. Yeah. He's, he's waited like a week. I was really played it cool. Man, that was messed up. <laughs> I, I was moved. I was like moving on. I was like, hey, you know, I guess yeah. he's probably right. You know, she probably is too good for me, and that's fine. Okay. And so I'll just move on. So I was, I went back to work, dude. I was like, I mean, and then he calls me out of the blue, and he's like, hey, she said, where were you working she, at the time? I was roofing houses in uh, Akron. Oh, you were well, still in Akron. Well, actually. Yeah, yeah you I, I was in Akron, Akron, but I was getting ready to go down to Mississippi and tri yeah. trim houses. Yeah. Uh, you know, hang doors. Yeah. You know, I, I hung more crooked doors in Mississippi than you can <laughs> possibly imagine. If you live in Mississippi, I apologize. you may be entitled If you have a dime a home in, in Mississippi <laughs> and your door doesn't close properly, I am to blame. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, mm. he, he waited, you know, all that time. And so, yeah. you know, I, I don't know why he felt a need to do that, I but, know. uh, Whatever, I'm glad he eventually called. Yeah. So then the next time we meet up is at a conference in Washington, D.C., which was what, probably just a few weeks later? Month later? Uh, yeah, it was probably about yeah. a month. Yeah, yep. And we meet up there. Again, no cell phones. Like, had yeah, I was to calling you from payphone. I, yeah. I was calling Tony's cell phone from a payphone with a phone card. <laughs> Like, where do we, we meet? Sound really There's old. no text. There's no, like, hey, I'm around the corner. Hey, I'm going to send you my location. Right. Yeah. No, There's that's, none of that. No, no, none of those things. Um, Would have been nice. Uh, Would have been. But, but anyway. we did find each other. Yeah. And then once we did, it was basically the entire rest of the time that we were there. We were pretty much inseparable. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, we had our, our first date, we went to Hard Rock Cafe in DC. Uh, you, here, here's one of the other moments for me that I was like, I really like this guy. And I think most people would probably, I don't know, maybe this would seem like a weird one, but we were sitting there eating lunch, dinner, whatever it was at Hard Rock and you had finished your food and I had eaten about half of mine. You know where I'm going. And after a few minutes of talking, you interrupted, or I think it was just a lull in the conversation. And you said, are, are you going to finish that? And I was like, <laughs> no, do you want it? And you're like, yeah, absolutely. So I slid my food over and I was like, okay, now I know that this guy is being real in this moment and not trying to, when I say not trying to impress me, I don't mean like you weren't impressive or that, you know what I mean? Like that you were just being real yeah. and that you weren't putting on some facade. You were just like, I mean, this is who I am. You either like it or you don't, if you know. Well, I remember, you know, it's, it was one of those things where they bring the food out and the other person's food looks better than <laughs> That's yours. That's the worst. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I was like, well, that. it's all, all good. And I, I didn't say anything, but I am a pretty fast eater. You so, are. So I, I have had to speed up considerably <laughs> over the years. <laughs> so I put my food down and you were slow eating yours. And you hadn't touched it for a few minutes. Uh -huh. And I was still kind of hungry and your food looked good. And so I thought, I literally thought about it because I was like, okay, if I it's a risk. ask her to eat off of First her date, plate. That's a risk. Yes, exactly. But then I thought, you know what? Let's just let's just be honest about who we are. You know, exactly. if we're still together in six months, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> be eating off my plate I'm gonna anyway. be asking, you know, are you gonna finish that? And uh, so I so I you know kind of went for it. Yeah, and, and and that was what I liked about it was it was like, all right, this guy it, like no pretense is probably the better way to say it. Like you weren't being pretentious in any way. It was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, here I am, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, like 
no hard feelings, we'll go our separate ways, whatever. And so that whole weekend, we just had a great time talking and um, awesome time hanging out. I actually, you know, remember I, I went back to my room and called my mom and was like, basically said, this is the guy. Mm-hmm. And I am not that person. I'm not a fast you, mover. You played it super cool because I put my cards absolutely on the table. So like literally the first night, because we, you know, we're doing this dialogue right now, right? We're having mm-hmm. a conversation, but we had a nonstop conversation from pretty much the moment we met to one in the morning or whatever. Yeah. It was like, it was like the, I don't even know what time we met at probably 10 o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. Went all throughout like the subway, to- went all through the, you know, the different monuments and mm-hmm. things in DC and just, it was just a, an easy nonstop conversation. And it just seamlessly went from like small talk to like really deep stuff. Like we mm-hmm. talked about, a lot of things about our values and our, you know, things that we, our aspirations and our future. And I mean, it was so easy. It was so natural. It it wasn't forced at all. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, man, this is amazing. And like, honestly, by the end of that night, I was like, what else would I be looking for? Like, this is, this is, this is everything, you know, that in a person that I, that I was looking for. And so I put the cards on the table. I was like, look, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, miss on this it's not going to be for lack of clarity <laughs> so i i said point a problem blank. undefined is undefeated yeah That's what Greg Ford i'm says. thinking if i'm gonna lose like i'm going out swinging you know so i was very direct i was like look i i'm interested in you beyond just a friendship like this was a riveting conversation but you know i'm not looking for another friend i'm i've got too many Go friends. Ahead. i was gonna say say exactly what you yeah, said I was, go I was, ahead i was like I've, I've got i don't need any more friends i I'm, i probably have too many i need to cut a few out you know but i was like was i'm not looking for line. any more friends i i'm interested in you for more than that yeah. and you were just you just kind of like chuckled and were like okay you know and there wasn't any reciprocity there was no like <laughs> Yeah, man, I feel the same way. This is different. Today was different. I really did feel like I was being obvious. I don't really. Yeah. Well, you know, you could use your words because you (laughs) could have definitely said, you know, this is different. Because I I literally, my head was a little messed up because I remember going back to my hotel and thinking, like, is this how she rolls? Like, because, like, she's obviously a very charming, great communicator, beautiful, probably has guys all the time shooting their shot. So maybe she's just very polite. So I'm like kind of playing it back because I'm like, I really did put it out there. And if she felt the same way, it would have been very easy to go, yeah, this is not normal for me either. (laughs) Didn't, right? So kept your cards very close to the vest. (laughs) Apparently poured your heart out to your mom that night, but left me twisting in the wind, which is fine. I'm not bitter. I I, I It seems like you're really over No, I'm just (laughs) telling the people what happened. (laughs) So anyway... I, I remember kind of twisting and turning all night, like kind of playing the day back, going like, you know, maybe this is my chance to get my heart broken here. Like, I don't know, um, you know, trying to kind of control myself a little bit in terms of my expectations. But reached out to you the next day. I was like, hey, you want to run it back? Let's let's go out again. And it was another great date. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, we, we could tell the whole story yeah. and that would take forever. But um But yeah, I mean, that was, it was pretty much it. It was over. Um, You had to go, so that was in, what, the beginning of August, right? Mm -hmm. You had to go back to Texas to finish out your last year of school. Uh, I was back in Ohio uh, going to college there. And so we had, our whole relationship was long distance. We never even lived in the same town until we were married and living in the same house, which is just bizarre. Don't recommend that for most no. people. It is it, it is an gr- added level of difficulty. Yeah. Um, but it was really fast. So we met in August. We got engaged the day before Thanksgiving mm-hmm. in November. And then we got married in March. It was an in- interesting dynamic because for us, the physical was was removed right so like it's like the show love is blind right i uh, literally was going to say go ahead I, no go, ahead, go for it go no ahead. no no no. i just i love that's where you're going take it well it, it was like love is blind but you do know what the person looks like right so mm-hmm. like we i did but that's it but that's it like you saw them a couple times so you have an idea what they look like so you know if that kind of is you know if you're attracted to them or there was no that, facetime you weren't seeing no, each other there was all the no time. FaceTime and we and we weren't in the same place at the same time yeah. so it was all voice and conversation mm-hmm. 
So the, you know, the, the couple months of conversation, which was daily, right? Eventually we cashed in the phone cards and bought cell phones and did the free mobile to mobile family plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Baby. But, but those conversations with the physical taken out of it was where we really found out, do we connect on a, on, on a mind and yeah. heart level? Yeah. And, uh, so that in some ways was, it was agonizing cause I wanted to, you know, be in proximity to you, but it was a huge blessing mm-hmm. because, you know, it, it, it was the first time really, honestly, I wanted to call someone on the phone. I wanted to talk like that. Like yeah, nor- neither normally, one of us are phone callers. No. <laughs> but, Text me. <laughs> yeah. But, but it was, it, it was extremely helpful. I think it was foundational mm-hmm. for us. And so, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that those conversations really were the reason that we were able to move that fast and, and still have it work. We had our difficulties the first year just because there were there was so much transition. Um, you know, you talk about uh, like all the major stressors on a relationship or on a person. We had them all in the first year. Moved to a new town, both got new jobs, bought a house. Um, my grandfather died the day before we got married. Um, you know, so you lose a loved one. Like just thing after thing after thing. There was so much going on that I think added some extra pressure for us the first year. But I think the fact that we had such a deep relational connection beyond just a physical connection was really what was our saving grace and kept us solid. So you brought up love is blind and that I love that you did. Cause I literally was going to ask you about that. You know, it's such a kind of a cultural phenomenon right now. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was really fascinating as we've watched this and you and I, we'll just go ahead and full disclosure admit like we've seen every episode since season one fully addicted like it's our thing we rearrange our schedules around release like (laughs) it's it's like we plan our little date put the kids to bed get our Um, snacks ready I bought us gold cups to drink out of like they have on the show because you can't watch the show and not I highly recommend them they're on Amazon maybe I should like link in my Amazon store (laughs) uh but anyways they um it, it is such a fascinating show because it, t- and I think probably even uniquely for us because it is kind of similar. And one of the things that I've noticed is like the couples who tend to do really well long term versus the ones that don't work it out. And, and I know we don't see all of their conversations in the pods, that kind of thing. But it, I wonder, like, what do you think, what kinds of questions should people be asking each other in those kind of environments to really get to know each other? Because you see some of them, like they kind of talk about some of the big picture stuff, you know, um, as far as like long-term life plans, how many kids do you want? You know, what do you want from your career? Those are important things. Um, But some people don't even go there. You know, there was one couple this season that like hadn't even really talked about kids Mm. And, and whether they wanted kids until, like, way later. Um, but then you also see sometimes people just really connect on, like, what kind of music they like or mm. whatever. And those things are nice, but, like, that's not – I don't think that's really going to sustain you through the day-to-day. So it's like, what kind of questions should people be asking each other? Yeah. Most people aren't dating like love is blind. Most people are dating in regular real life. But the point still stands, you know, to, to really get to know someone for a relationship that stands the test of time. What do you think are some key things they should be asking each other? Yeah, so I, I have a few, but I also would love to hear if you if yeah, you sure. have thoughts that mm-hmm. you have to offer. So I can either go first or second. Why don't you, why don't you pick it? You want me to go first? Okay. I'll tell you. I think, um, so I think communication and conflict is is a, is a key, is, a, is like a make or break in relationships. So I think like talking through like, Hey, how, how do you handle conflict? Like what is your, you know, so even like talking through like, how do you, how, what what does it mean for you to like handle it well and not handle it well? And maybe even sharing some stories around like, here's what I've learned about how to handle conflict because conflict is inevitable, right? You have, I I would be trying to, if I was in the pods or whatever, I'd be trying to like find out how self-aware this person is and even how interested they are in, understanding themselves Mm. um, because I think that's that's key right like we're dynamic characters we're changing all the time like there are some things about our personalities that are fixed or whatever and you you know same old Greg same old Shaylin whatever like 
some of that is fixed, but we are dynamic. We are changing. There's a lot about us that are changing. So mm -hmm. like your ability to kind of understand yourself and your willingness to go there is going to be key for how does this relationship work? Because relationships often break down because you have w one of the people in the relationship is unwilling um, to, to work on the problem. And if one person kind of shuts down, okay, it's, it takes two to make it go right. It could take one to make it go wrong. Like right. if one person shuts down and isn't willing to, to, to dig deep or whatever, then it's, it's, it's over. Yeah. So I think I would be kind of trying to figure out like how, how intra intrapersonally intelligent is the person that, that matters to me. Okay. Break that down. Cause some people may not have ever heard that term before. Yeah. So you have interpersonal intelligence, which is, you know, the other person, person. To person, yeah, person to person, like you read other people really well. And then intrapersonal intelligence is your, your own head. Like how can I sort, can I sort out uh, my own thoughts and understand where they're coming from and be willing to dig inside for that. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, to take the chaos of my thoughts, my feelings, and to bring order to them, to bring understanding mm -hmm. to them. And again, I've, I mean, we've, probably all been in conversation or relationship with people who had this internal conflict and you were working harder than they were to try to figure it out. Yeah. And so to me, it was, it's very important. Yeah. It would be important to me, uh, to know, is that person eager and willing to dig in or do they just go, I don't know, I don't, whatever. And this is, dis are disinterested in kind of going in there. They just kind of maybe want to vent about it. Or are they willing to kind of go in there and try to figure it out mm -hmm. and they're and able to do that, right? So I think that's key because then, you know, how are we going to be able to relate to each other has a lot to do with what kind of peace are you able to come to in your own heart towards mm -hmm. yourself. So I think I'd be trying to figure out conflict, self-awareness. Um, and, and in a sense, too, I, I don't think you have to, like, go dig up your, your exes and go, well, you know, let's talk about our exes today. But I think you can talk about like, what have you learned about oh, yourself and yeah. what have you learned? It's a gold and, mine. Uh, yeah. About <laughs> from your previous relationships. Yeah. Like we don't have to go and bring up every single detail, but no. like, it, you know, to me again, a, a wisdom is something you develop over time by evaluating your experiences, digging into them mm -hmm. and you come out wiser and smarter. Mm -hmm. Does this person have a pattern of that? Like, do, do they tend to every single quote unquote failure or, uh, every season they come through the situation and they, they, they've come out better. Mm -hmm. And cause, cause that, I mean, that's the reality, right? You have ups and downs, you have victories and, and failures. And there've been just as many marriages that fell apart because of victories. Yeah. Okay. They win no, and, man, and, and didn't know how to manage. Seriously, victory. seriously. That's a huge one. I, I love that. I, that wasn't even on my radar, but gosh, that is a massive one that I think is, Fl that flies under the radar and that wrecks people is that they have not in any way prepared for the new weight that winning in life yeah. brings, that achieving goals, that getting to the next level, so to speak, gets uh, to you. Yeah. You know, you, you do see people crumble after they've been together their whole lives and they finally get to the top, so yeah. to speak, right? And they have this pinnacle moment and they fall apart. They weren't prepared for success either. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. so I guess for me, it would be somebody that is self-aware, values self-awareness, is able to, to do that, and then is able to take whatever situation, whether it's a high or low, and to you know work their way through it in a positive mm -hmm. way, and then is is basically knows how to do conflict. Yeah. So if we don't, man, we're going to, whether we win or lose, we're going to destroy our relationship. Yeah. I need somebody that can go there with me. That, that, that would be very important to me. How so, about you? Yeah. Two things real quick, just related to what you said. So first of all, talking about how success can destroy a couple, I think that's probably like a new concept for a lot of people to think about because I know for a long time, I didn't think about that either. And I think most people just assume like everything's rosy at the top. So once we get there, like everything's going to be golden and beautiful and great. And all of our things that we've been stressing over will be gone. And 
No, you're going to have new things yeah. that you stress. You're under over. a microscope. You're, you're, uh, you know, you have more people criticizing you. Yeah, you have more there's pressure. So much. You have burdens a bit, right? You, you start your business. It's just you. Mm -hmm. Then it's just you. You have 50 employees. You have 100 employees. Right. Now you have 100 people that you. Their you livelihoods. Need, yeah, you're yeah. responsible for. Yep. The the other piece on that too. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. The other, oh, the other piece of that too that I think is an issue is that people will sometimes put their relationship on the back burner to a degree yeah. during those phases where right. they're working their way up the mountain, right? Because again, they just have this assumption that once we get there, it's going to be great and we're going to have time for each other and the pressure will be off and we'll just be celebrating on the mountaintop. And then what they don't realize is A, like you said, now you have a whole new set of pressures, but also B, even in that moment where you're selling, celebrating at the top, if you've put your relationship on the back burner this entire time, it's not just magically waiting for you when you get there. You've continued to develop as human beings this entire time. And if you're not doing it together, you might get to the top and realize we don't even really know each other. Yeah. We don't like each other. We don't know what to talk about. And so you're toasting with a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just not... Well, well, you, if you talk to like clinical psychologists or or uh, family counselors, they'll you know they talk about codependency, right? Mm -hmm. You you have families that actually sometimes bond through trauma, or they dr they bond through dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So let's say you can have uh, dysfunctional you, drive. Yeah, let's say you have a, a parent. Let's say the let's just say the dad and the family is an abusive alcoholic, and the whole family bonds together, uh, mm -hmm. and really they're, they're the glue is the dysfunction. And yeah. so they all come together, they cry together, they support mm -hmm. each other. They might, one of the older siblings or, or somebody might provoke dad to, to, to take the abuse, to protect the kids. So in some way, with even with the fear, they're feeling love from a sibling and mm -hmm. everybody's together. And then clinical psychologists will tell you that dad goes to rehab, dad gets to the bottom of his issues, dad gets free, and the families often fall apart. Yeah. Because now the dysfunction is gone and what what are we rallying around? So in some ways you would think that the abuse would destroy the family and it does destroy the family Absolutely in, in, in a does. sense, right? But right. often they stay together. Then when the dysfunction is removed, now we're actually winning. Yeah. Now we're actually succeeding. But if we succeeding. haven't learned how to function as a healthy unit around a healthy motivation and you took away basically the centrifugal force yeah. of our family. Yeah. The, the other thing... Um, that came to mind for me when you were talking about doing conflict, I think another major piece of that is when couples tend to get in a fight and, and view the other person as a villain or the person to be defeated. And I just need you to see things my way. And of course we want to be seen and heard. Sometimes that is a really valid thing. Like, Hey, you're not hearing me on something that's important for you to hear me or to see my viewpoint or whatever. Um, but I think the idea of, I am fighting for our relationship to be better, not fighting you because you're my problem. Right. And, and it seems like kind of a subtle nuance, but that your headspace heading into a fight and throughout it has such a huge impact on how it goes. If you're coming to it like, we have just got to tackle this thing that is an issue between us because it's keeping us from experiencing experiencing the closeness we want or it's help you know keeping us from moving forward versus this person is driving me nuts this person is doing you know what I mean yeah. and kind of villainizing and othering that person then you're not fighting to make this thing better you're just fighting each other and um you you don't want to make up with your enemy to be honest yeah. <laughs> like you just want to win yeah but but if you are seeing the other person as your teammate and you're fighting this issue together. And sometimes that's hard because you really are frustrated with the other person very specifically over something. But if you still just go, hey, I really need you to hear me on this and I need you to see my viewpoint because this is coming between us. It's affecting the way I feel about you. I don't want to feel this. If you're really attempting to approach it from that viewpoint, you will have so much more of a positive outcome than if you just see them as... You, you are the problem. You keep bringing this up. You keep, do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's committing to fight the problem mm -hmm. and not the person. Exactly. And, and often it feels like, well, the problem and the person are one and the same. <laughs> okay. But no, there's something there else, right? Like you yeah. fell in love with this person. Right. Or, you know, you love this person for a reason. Like there was, yeah. 
there, there's so many good qualities in that person and, and something is in there. There's a factor, there's a catalyst that's in there that's causing that person to not be the best version of themselves yeah. or for me to not be the best version of myself, right? What is it? It's an insecurity or it's a, it's some factor that is overtaking my good qualities mm -hmm. and it's causing me to behave in a certain fashion and it's causing me to, um, to maybe be protective of myself and to be selfish or whatever it might be. And so often what we do is we, we look at that person and we, we attack them Yeah. instead of going, what is, what is that catalyst? You know, it's funny. We were at a conference recently and the, one of the speakers got up and showed a picture of himself when he was like eight years old, you know, and he was like the cutest kid. Right. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he goes, I think we all should carry around pictures of ourselves at eight years old and just show yeah. them to each other so that he goes, I think we would treat each other a lot better. I loved that. Yeah. It really <laughs> was a great point. Yeah. Because you know, you see this grown up, right. Who's acting in a certain fashion. They're lashing out or they're mm -hmm. shutting down or they're again in the worst version of themselves. And often it just, it, it stems it, even from the eight year old you. Yeah. And yeah. it's easy to make an enemy out of that person and go, yeah. you know what? They're, they should know better. But the reality is, you know, they were once an eight-year-old and in some ways there's still maybe an eight-year-old mm -hmm. in them, right? And you're going, it's not that they're bad. They're mm -hmm. made in the image of God. They have a lot of great gifts, a lot of great qualities. Right. At their best, they're generous, they're kind, they're, you know, they're all these things. At their worst though, yeah, you know, they're this other thing. And so now I'm attacking this person and I'm driving them further maybe into the worst version of themselves. And of course, in romantic, like intimate relationships. Yeah, you're butting up against things in each other all the time. Yeah. And, and if it gets ugly, right, mm -hmm. I know how to hurt you. Right. Like, you know how to hurt me. You you have seen into me, right? That's what intimacy is, into me see. You've seen all the way into my heart. You know what would cut me deep, mm -hmm. and I know what would cut you deep. And so if you kind of go there and you start to attack this person, now instead of being an ally, someone that could actually be a guide and in the right way, help them, you know, to work through whatever the actual problem is mm -hmm. and get them to the person, help them get back to the person that they were meant to be. Now I'm attacking them. And of course, again, that, that's where probably some of the, the most harmful, painful things happen, right? Yeah. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on some ways that people even assess their compa compatibility. So you'll hear people like in the pods, we had such a connection, you know, whatever. And connection's great. Connection's kind of the initial chemistry that you feel. Your brain chemicals are going wild, you know, whatever. But it, it's not necessarily the recipe for a lasting relationship. So like what are some things that you think are key questions even beyond like how do you fight or whatever but it's like gosh how do we keep how do we keep being best friends long term like how do I assess that you know what I mean how yeah. do I how do I see if this person is is my person in that sense because I think a lot of times I'm struggling for the language on it a little bit but like the best thing I will say in my relationship with you is that I feel like you are actually my best friend, you know? And so even if other parts of our relationship were missing for some reason, I love talking to you. I, I feel like we've had a 20 year long running conversation, you know? And so for me, um, I think the key to the fact that we've been able to keep evolving and keep having a great relationship is because we are best friends first. And so how do people find that in, and discover like, do we have that level of compatibility? Because you and I didn't like the same kind of music when we got together. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people like love to mention that kind of stuff. I've never heard of six pence none the richer. <laughs> okay, that was not my jam. <laughs> That's stop it. I have won him over to folk music over time though. Folk Just music only around is, campfires. Yeah, I can I but, can rock some uh, milk carton kids. Yes. Yeah. Shout out. We love some milk carton. That's kids. some peaceful stuff, right? It there. is. It's some good. deep stuff too. Yes. By the way. Yes. Really good. So, anyways. All that to say, and I, I do like some some rap and R and B and all that kind of stuff now. So, anyways, uh, but uh, I, I, I remember I felt really proud when I got you listening to Chingy, <laughs> and you were you were knew every word bumping <laughs> in a season that was yeah probably a good eighteen years ago. It was you were 
To this day, hey, that got you through some tough times. I was going to say, Chingy. to this day, ludicrous is my guilty oh, pleasure. Oh, like, oh, if yeah. I need a pick me up, get back, get back. You don't know me like that. Red Light yeah. District was a great album. I can, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say, <laughs> do we need to cut that out? <laughs> no, I stand by it. Okay. I stand by it. All right. It. I'm not taking it yeah. back. Yeah, that's a sure, hot Sure, find, find an edited version, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's gold. It's musical yeah. gold. Okay, moving on. Seriously, though, what are some things that you think would help people find their compatibility, like even assess that? Does mm-hmm. anything come to mind for you on that? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I, think, I think talking about your values um, and not just, uh, not just in like a one-liner or one word, mm-hmm. but to really talk about what you mean by it. Right? Yeah. So like, so like for like example. Like draw real-world scenarios. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think having a, like kind of a running dialogue around it. So like it's interesting, like as a, as a church, we, you and I and a few other people established our values before we even named the church. And we came up with, uh, uh, at the time, six, but now seven core values. And they're words, and they're words that if I said them all, probably everybody would go, yeah. Right, of course. But it's like, well, what do you mean by it, though? Exactly. So, like, to this day, I mean, we're, you know, 13 years in as a church. Every month, Mm. like, we have staff members that have been here 12 years. Yeah. Every month we get together and we talk about what these values mean. Yeah. And what they mean to us and where we see them and are we aligned to them and are we not and all Mm -hmm. of that. Like, because behind a word, whether it's communication or honesty or collaboration, whatever it is, right? Like whatever values you, you have, you know, Hey, I want somebody who's independent. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? What do you you mean by that? Yes. Okay. Someone who has an identity of their own or a life outside of me. Okay, cool. Paint me a picture of what that looks like. Let's talk about that. And what are the potential liabilities of that? And okay. At what point is that going to not be good, mm-hmm. you know, or do you like that all the time and why and blah, blah, blah. Like, I think a lot of those things, like in terms of compatibility to go, let's yeah. take some of these concepts yeah, and unpack them more. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I think you start to find out, Hey, are we, are we aligned around, you know, how we see the world? Yeah. And not even that, like we have to agree on everything. Again, I think one of the great things no. about our relationship, you have made me so much better. Like you have made me think about things, look at things um, from perspectives. I never would have thought. I'm a very, very, very different and better person Same. Be- because you have done that, right? Challenged my thinking on things. Yeah, but like here, yeah. here's an example. Like your, there hasn't been one conversation no matter how hard it was, no matter how even uncomfortable it was, that you shut down. Like you, you, you go there, like you will entertain. Maybe I might bring up something totally counter to how you were raised or what you've always thought. It may be counterintuitive and you'll go there. You will go there and you'll think about it and you'll, you'll consider that it might be true. Now you may not accept it. You may come back and go, you know, I, no, I don't agree with that, but like you'll go there. You won't shut down. That is to me, that's a huge part of compatibility. I would go nuts if I was married to someone and I'm questioning something and I'm bringing it up and they won't even go there. Mm. They, they won't even go there. Like you will, you'll enter that. You'll, you'll try it on for size as mm. well. You'll, you'll try to blow it full of holes and see if it can stand up. And to me, that is like the bond over that. That is bonding. Like we connect so much through that. So again, that would be for me. You've helped me get better at doing that too. And, and even just learning how to process some of those thoughts and, um, because you do it as well, you know? And so I think we are a really good match on that front. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, it's so important. Like, again, I, w- I would, if it's, it's been a huge tool in our relationship. It, mm-hmm. It's something I really, really value. Um, but I, I think I would feel kind of alone not being able to share that with you. Yeah. So, so I think again, for me, that, that type of thing's perfect. I think for, it is important. And I think for a lot of people, you got to kind of know like, what is, what, what, what do I value? Mm-hmm. And, you know, cause again, not some people like, like the strong silent type, you know, that 
it doesn't, you know, they don't really talk. It's like, no, I'll, I'll do that with my, my girls or mm -hmm. whatever. And, and that, that may be to totally fine for them. They may not, you know, they may not need that to bond or connect or, you know, again, some, I mean, we have lives separate from each other and mm -hmm. you, you, you have, you know, ways of re recouping without me and vice versa. And, right. Um, but to me, it's like, it, it, it's some those things I want to, I want to share with you. So mm -hmm. I think, I think talking about like and really thinking through what are your values and then, not just having those be one word, mm -hmm. but having them really be a running conversation and find out or when we say the same word, do we mean the same thing? Yeah. You know what? I, it actually just brought to mind. So, uh, Brandon, our producer and I were just talking before, uh, the episode started and we were talking about this a little bit. And, and so like, for example, the word adventure, like being adventurous. Are you adventurous? Well, of course you're like, yes, I'm adventurous. Well, one person's idea of adventurous might be, they might be thinking about like, we go on vacations and we go to kind of a faraway place or whatever. And the other person, you know, Brandon brought up, he's like, you know, Greg had said before that when you guys met, uh, Shaylin, you were in school for broadcast journalism and, and you really wanted to go be a war reporter. Like you wanted to be on the front line. To me, that's adventurous, right? And he's like, my wife would never want to do that. That's not, she's a different kind of adventurous. She's still adventurous for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I mean, heck, she was on The Voice. Like she's, mm -hmm. she's lives a, a big full life, um, but she's a very different kind of person. And so I think. Yeah, one person might, adventurous might be, we're going to go on a vacation to a place we've never been. We want to see the world. Another person, it's, I'm going to take a huge risk in my career. Exactly. That's going to put all of our money on the line. Yeah. It's going to put all, all our... <laughs> that's, the, that, that's two different types of... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You have to draw out, like, what does that mean to yeah. you? Heck, even within uh, talking about vacations, like, that seems like such a, you know, minor thing, but, like, it is something you're going to do together probably many times long term, hopefully. Um, but you know, it's like one person, an, an adventurous vacation might be, we go to a place we've never been before. And the other person is like, I'm sending you links to go. We could go gorilla trekking. <laughs> we could go shark diving. Yeah. You're like, how about not, <laughs> yeah. you know, let's stay on the beach. Um, so even just understanding, it's not that you have to be hundred percent aligned on all of those things, but some of those things, like if your idea of adventurous is like you said, the big career moves that are going to require both of you to kind of be all in on this lift. Yeah. Maybe it's not even the whole financial risk, but like, um, for example, I want to pursue this thing in my career. That means I'm not going to have a lot of margin in my life yeah. for a period of time, maybe a few years. And so are you independent enough of a person? Not just, you know, I, not that you would do something for me because that could end up leading to resentment that you like just kind of stuck it out while I did medical school or built this business or whatever. But like, no, you're totally cool leading your life and kind of carrying the majority of the load on some of these other things that are related to our family, our home front, whatever. Yeah. You know, if you don't have somebody that's on the same page with you, that is going to absolutely destroy your relationship. Yeah. I think you also need to be very, very honest with yourself yes. when you're attracted to someone. Ooh. Are you, are you really attracted to who they are and want to help them become all they can be in that area? Or are you wanting to, you're attracted to this, but now I want to come and possess it and essentially make it work for me or domesticate that person. Oh. Right. So, so you, you'll, you'll see you it a know lot. You're hitting on my well, ultimate pet peeve. Keep going. Go, no, you can. No, go. no. I want to hear your so, take on So this. you'll see a lot of times, maybe, uh, it happens. It's both genders, both genders. You, do you it. see, uh, I'll speak but from a guy's it, perspective, you know, yeah, right? Men, they, they, they see this woman, right? She's out there. She's going for it. You know, she's, she's, uh, um, assertive and proactive and, and you know they she's ambitious. Zest for she's life. got zest for yeah. life, man. She's ambitious. She's out there making it happen, and so they're attracted by that, those traits. But then what they want to do is take her and essentially muzzle her. Yeah. Just not now. You come and and, and I'm going to possess you and I'm going to confine you. Yeah. And it's like, man, when you found her, when you met her, she was out you know, with dreams and hopes and she was making stuff happen. Now you want to come in here and bring her in here. And then what often happens is they take and they domesticate that person down to their liking. Yes. Then 
that person now ceases to be as attractive to them. Now they're, now yeah, they're attracted to the not. next person out yes. here who's, who's, who's got the tiger by the tail and is out taking adventures because you brought this person in and tried to make her something. And so now she's become less attractive to you. Yeah. You see the same with women. Women will find, see a guy, man, this guy is a, you know, whatever. He's out there going for it. And so, you know, he's taking risks. He's, he's fighting lions. And then they want him to come in now and take all of those wild traits mm -hmm. and to, and I'm not saying that those traits sometimes don't need some maturity. We yeah. do pull each other in, Agreed. you know, you, you've, you've, you know, helped smooth out some of my rough edges, help me think. So, sure. so we make each other better, but, but to not take this person, the thing you attracted and then take it away yes. in the marriage. Like I need to be honest. If, if I married someone that, that was actually when we were dating, I wanted to marry you, but I was actually the one saying, you know what, let's wait a while because I knew you had dreams and mm -hmm. hopes and things you want to do. And what I didn't want was for you to go and make a, uh, a long-term decision in the, in the short term right. that you were going to look back and go, man, you know, I married Greg, you know, and I, I wanted to be on the front lines of the war with a, you know, reporting and, <laughs> you know, here I am, you know, taking care of this guy's Monstera plant, you <laughs> know, it's Monster. actually your Monstera plant, but you, you get the idea, like, <laughs> I didn't want that for you. Right. So like to me, even throughout our marriage, I've been very much yeah. saying, what do you, yeah, what's very, in your heart? Supportive. What do you want to do? Yeah. And how can I support that? And yeah. vice versa. Like, yes. I think it's a big mistake. Like count the cost. If you're attracted to somebody who's, you know, has these certain traits are when you marry them, are you wanting to throw gasoline on that fire and help them be all that they can be? Or are you just attracted to them? And now you want to take them yes. and possess them. One last thought on this. I, I did, uh, when I was studying for a, a series on love, I heard a guy talking about black holes. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about like the science of, of, yeah. of black holes, right? They're all over the, you know, um, universe. universe, right? And so what, what black holes do, and we know like stuff can't get out of right. it, but what it does is the gravitational pull is so intense, it disintegrates whatever it sucks yeah. in, right? Even light. So if light goes into a black hole, it takes the elements of light and the gravitational pull is so intense. It, it, it pulls those elements yeah. apart. And so it's no longer light. If it sucked water into it, the gravitational pull would take, you know, the H2O and break them apart. And right. so it ceases to be what it is. And uh, I heard a guy talking about how bad relationships are like black holes. Yeah, They take who you are and all these elements that maybe I saw and, and, and it was attracted. But when you got close to me, you disintegrated. Yeah, I pulled you apart from who you were Yeah, instead of a cell mentality, which is no, I want to split. I want, I, I want you to be able to, to be more of yeah. right. Who God's made you to be and multiply. So I, I think in compatibility, it's like, yeah. do I really know who that person is? And do I want to be a part of helping them achieve their full God-given potential 100%. and purpose? Or am I just wanting to possess them? Yes. And I mean, you know, you and I have had this discussion many times and I've gotten passionate about it at times because I think that is the cruelest thing that you can do to another person, that especially someone you claim to love, is to do something to them that pulls apart at the very threads of who they are. And obviously there are other ways to do it, but that is such an ugly, horrible thing to do to someone. And for some reason, I think we've sanctioned that in society. And it's like other things were like, well, it's not okay to do that to people. It's not okay to physically abuse them or sexually abuse someone or whatever, but like somehow it's okay. And we don't see it as abuse for someone to take the elements of someone and, and the very essence of who they are and their spark in life and want to just own it and suck it in for ourselves instead of just supporting it and the other person and feeding into it. When I married you, I didn't want to, you know, shape you into something. It's one of my biggest pet peeves with women. Please stop doing this to men and treating them like projects. Like, I just can't take it. Because people are not projects. People are whole human beings. And yes, we all have to keep working on ourselves. We are our own projects that we're responsible for. I'm not responsible to shape you into some other image. That's between you and God. That's not my business. And so when people, I see someone take on another person and go, well, I, I see potential in them, whatever. 
If you think the potential is there for you to mold, walk away. Mm -hmm. You're not being fair. You're not being kind. You're going to be the cruelest person in that other person's life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so unfair. Um, I, I think that's, sorry, mm -hmm. I, Go for it. you look Go like you're going to change subjects. I, no, I'm not. I, I, oh, okay. I was just going to say, I think we need to view ourselves as the greatest cheerleader in the other person's life. That for, for me, kind of the visual that has stuck with me is like, I get to have a front row seat to your life. I have the best seat in the house and I get to cheer for you. Sometimes you ask me for input on whatever, but like, I'm not the director. Mm -hmm. I just have the best view in the house mm -hmm. to watch how you've unfolded as a human being over 20 years and what a privilege. Yeah. And, and I think that that I'm by no means perfect. Nobody is. We aren't. Our marriage is not perfect, but I think that's been one of the healthiest things for us is that we genuinely just want the absolute best for one another and we want each person to find the truest, spark-filled, beautiful, peaceful version of ourselves. Yeah, I would say for someone listening to this, if this has any application in your relationship, you need to ask yourself, am I trying to possess that person yeah. or am I trying to propel that person? Yes. Am I trying to possess them or propel them? And I think... I think the key is you have to get to the core of your insecurity Yes. because if I'm insecure, then you being propelled right to new levels will be a threat to me because yes. I'll worry. It will inflame my insecurity. It'll inflame my insecurity. I'll worry that if you get too high and go too far and you get too big, me. you're you not going to need me. me or want me anymore. Right. Yeah. And so, so in doing that, I might even fool myself into thinking that I'm loving you well by pulling by, you down. By pulling you down yeah. and holding you close. And it's like C.S. Lewis says, he goes, what people often call love is not yes. love. It's a desire to be loved. Right. So if I crave to be loved by you, right, right, more than I actually love you, which yep. is wanting you to bloom and blossom and, and propel into yep. uh, your greatest potential, then what I'll try to do is possess you. Yeah. And in so doing, it'll stifle you. And now it's really about me. So to get to the root of that insecurity, to the core of that insecurity, really sets you up for success. Otherwise, the self-deception is endless. Yeah. And then the casualty is is you and, yeah. and me, us. me too, right? Yeah. Our, our relationship becomes a shell of what it could be. Yeah. And I think it's also really harmful for the person that is... Uh, I hate to use the word instigator because I, I don't want to shame people for that. I want people to feel open to evaluating that about themselves. But I think it's also really bad for the person that is trying to control the narrative, trying to control the other person, because you're not getting to live in the fullness of your life without insecurity ruling who you are. Right. It's unfair to everyone. The greatest gift that you can give yourself, the other person, and the relationship is to give everyone that freedom to be the best version of themselves. It, when, when you're bound in insecurity, it really is counterintuitive because, yes. because you tend to think, well, if I, if I do shame the person, oh, you're, you're always with them, you never care about me, you, you tend to think that that somehow is pulling them closer or that it's keeping them with you, but it's actually it's such a turnoff. Yeah. So, so by really honestly being open-handed, by being someone's biggest... Uh, you know, source of propulsion, mm -hmm. or like you said, their biggest cheerleader, their biggest encourager, okay, and, and, and letting go, uh, it actually makes you more attractive. That person, you know, it, it's actually creating more value. You're, yeah. you're, you know, the wind beneath their wings, right? You're yeah. the one that's building them up. You're the one that's, you know, able to, to play a role in their life no one else can play. Yep. And yet the, the thing that stops that is, is insecurity, you know, it's, it, it absolutely is debilitating yeah. and, and it's death in relationship. Even if the relationship stays together and committed, it just kills what the relationship could be. Well, I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> I, I mean, you well, laid down hey, a word. Last thing I'll just say is thank you. Thank you for the way that you have supported me and you've seen more in me than I've seen in myself many times. You've encouraged me to do things like I look back at risks that I've taken, that we've taken together, um, that were scary, that were challenging. And, you know, you having my back and you seeing the best in me and building me up was one of the reasons I felt confident to do it. And knowing 
that if I fell flat on my face and everybody thought I was a fool and I embarrassed myself, I knew you'd still be standing right there. I'm not right going there. anywhere. You're yeah. stuck with me. So, so it actually quite uh, mitigates the risk. I go, you know what? If I'm going to have the most important thing in place, mm -hmm. these other things, they're just endeavors. They're just goals that we're trying to pursue. They're just um, you know, things we're trying to accomplish. If those things go away, I, I have the most important thing in place, and that's you. And so you know, I... I, I can't thank you enough for that. Like I, I'm very, very grateful. Well, thank you, hon. And you've you've been the exact same thing for me. You have scooped me up off the floor at my absolute worst, and made me feel like I could keep going when I didn't think that I could. And you have been my biggest hype man at the highest po points in my life. And you've been there for every major milestone. And I just can't imagine doing any of the last 20 years without you. That's been the best thing about being alive is that you've been part of it. So I love you. Thanks for doing this with me. You got it. So let's, let's ditch this place, go on a date. <laughs> let's go get some food. All right. Peace out. <laughs>